Good morning, I am Stephen Edholm from skillcult.com and today we have a pear tree to train. I'm gonna show you some simple, effective, and powerful methods to get the fruit tree form that you want in a relatively short amount of time. We're gonna contrast that to the common recommendations which uh, tend to, in my experience, be slow, clunky, unsure, and often ineffective. Now we're gonna be training a pear tree today. Most of my experience is with apples and pears. You can definitely apply this to other trees but I don't have the range and breadth of experience to say how successful it's gonna be. Most trees respond pretty well to these type of interventions, I found. Uh, the worst I've had is sweet cherry. So your results may vary. The more everyone tries these methods out, the more we'll find out about how well they work and on which species. Now we're gonna go for a specific form of tree, which I'm gonna show you here in a second, called the Modified Central Leader, but you can use these methods to achieve other tree forms. Now, if you wanna learn more about the Modified uh, Central Leader or Delayed Open Center forms of tree, go watch my video on that, which goes into that pretty in depth. I don't wanna take the time to do that again, but I'm gonna just go do like a brief version here. Now, there's a lot of different ways to train fruit trees. The form we're gonna do is assuming that we want a long-lived, healthy tree. It's going to be a large tree. It's going to provide shade and all that stuff. You can apply this method to dwarf trees. If you're absolutely going for the maximum amount of production, if you're doing a short-lived dwarf tree in your backyard or something like that, you may want to explore other options like tall spindle. I mean, there's just tons of different ways to do this. But in this case, I want a very specific form. And this form of tree very rarely, if ever, happens by accident. You have to make it happen. This could be three or four branches. In this case, we're gonna train this to four, but I just do three because it's more simple. We have wide crotch ang angles here. So when this branch grows, bark won't get trapped in this crevice right down in here. So we want these to come out wide. If these crotch angles are really high and really tight and bark starts to grow in between these two, it makes a weak joint. And then when there's a heavy fruit load or snow or something like that or ice, the branch can rip away from the tree. We also don't want branches growing right across from each other. So these are gonna be spaced at least six inches, like eight, 10, 12 inches apart. The eight to 10 inches is a really good goal for most fruit trees. If we have two branches growing right here or even worse, three or four, this weakens the trunk and these trees tend to fail right where there's uh, clusters of branches. So these are called scaffolds. So we're gonna have these three or four main scaffolds and then we're gonna have the top of the tree cut off and then it's gonna grow, say a two to four little kind of, it's kind of like a little centerpiece or candelabra. So what this does is it spreads the resources of the tree out and shares them between these four kind of main growing points or, or limbs or something. You can think of these limbs almost like uh, trunks, like they're almost like separate trunks. So what happens is as the resources come up the tree, we have, let's say this much resource coming up the tree. We'll draw a big fat arrow here. Okay, so now we've taken all this resource and we've divided it evenly between those. So especially since we cut this off again and made three little small things up here, this keeps the growth of the tree down. So especially say with this pear tree, pear trees just love to grow up. They like to go up and up and up. If this tree was in a really good healthy spot and it grows really well, uh, it could end up 30 feet or more tall, and then you need, what, a 20-foot ladder? So that's not gonna be the ideal form of tree for most people. It's gonna grow like basically just a big pyramid like this. This is gonna give us a tree that has kind of a broad spreading umbrella shape. It's, it provides shade, it's pretty, it's easy to maintain, easy to pick, easy to prune. Okay, so let's look at it from the top. So this is just the main scaffolds here, and then these out here are called secondary scaffolds. So those are what actually support the fruiting wood. So I want you to think of two different things, structural wood and fruiting wood. You know, this is just structural wood. At first you'll get some fruit along these guys, but eventually that fruit wood dies out and then you're growing fruit on these secondary scaffolds. So the structural wood is the main trunk, you know, these big scaffolds coming out, the primaries and the secondaries. And these form a framework on which you grow fruit. Now, over time, the fruiting wood itself can be replaced. Like once in a while, you actually kind of want to go in and refresh the fruiting woods by, you know, making bigger cuts, removing old spurs that are dying out and just kind of reinvigorating and refreshing that wood, growing new stuff which will then come into bearing. And you can keep through all of that, this main framework. So think of right now, what we're trying to do is in the first uh, three to four years, we're trying to establish this basic framework. And then that framework will get thicker 
and stronger and bigger, but it won't really keep spreading enormously outward. It will kind of like reach a point where it just grows slowly out, maybe a little bit, but it's kind of static. And we're just gonna use that as a frame on which to grow fruiting wood. Okay, so one thing you'll notice is that we don't have a lot of extra wood. Like we're not gonna leave a lot of extra branches on here like this, you know, because for one thing, when we're trying to grow this framework, they're gonna take some of this energy, right? And so we're leaving a little bit less for these guys. The other thing is that eventually we're gonna cut these off. So, you know, eventually the tree is gonna to become too crowded. There's gonna to be too many limbs if we leave a lot of limbs. And then we're gonna to have to cut these off. And if that happens to be when this ends up about three inches in diameter, we're gonna let, uh, you know, fungus and rot and bacteria into the tree by making that big cut. So if you do this right and no you know, horrible accidents happen like bears and snow and breakage and stuff like that, we can kind of get this form and just keep it and, and not really ever have to make any really large cuts. At least that's the ideal. So this makes a really long lived, healthy, strong, spreading, pretty, easy to maintain tree. How are we gonna get there? You will be told almost universally wherever you go. If you ask your guy at the nursery, if you go to a university you know, extension website, if you ask an orchardist, almost everywhere you go, you're gonna to be told when you plant a tree, a young tree, you should chop it off low where you want the first branches to form. It's called heading back. I call it clip and pray because you don't really know what's gonna grow and you don't know where it's gonna grow except that it's gonna grow below the point where you cut it. Now heading back is useful at times and it can be used, but it's an uncertain method and as far as a way to get a form of tree like this or any really specific form, it's actually pretty terrible. The only form it's really good for getting is called the vase form where you chop it off and a bunch of limbs grow right out of the same spot. But again, like I said, that forms a weak union and it's been long known that those, are, those trees are weak and that eventually they split apart. So the reason that doesn't work very well is let's say I cut this off and then what's gonna happen is one or two shoots are gonna grow pretty straight and then maybe one or two or three or more sometimes will grow kind of outward, more like these are, are growing like this. And the reason is because the stuff at the top, whatever's growing at the top, like this right here, uh, attains dominance and it sends messages down the tree telling other stuff to grow outward like this and produce fruit and limbs. So this is called apical dominance. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna cut this off, like we're gonna have something grow up and then some stuff will grow out here. Well, what if I want branches spaced uh, eight to 10 inches apart? Well, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to, if I'm using heading back as my main method, then I, I have to let it grow and then head it back again and then let it grow and head it back again. And you can do that in one year um, so that's, that is an option if you do it during the growing season. So, you know, you, you get it a certain height and then clip it off. Usually it will stimulate some branching and another shoot will come up and you can clip that off. So you could try that as a, a summer training method, but normally what people do is they'll cut it off. It'll grow all the way up. And then the next year you say, well, I want to branch here. So what do I do? Well, you cut it off again. So then you just set back all of this growth and then it goes up and then you cut it back again. And eventually you get your three or four branches and everybody's happy, except it took a long time. You'll be told that you have to do that because if you don't, the tree will become too wispy and too weak and it'll just flop over. It's not true. Like the worst thing, like this is a little bit floppy because it grew super fast and it, uh, there's some trees over here, so it's like leaning away uh, from the shade, the shade of these trees. But still, it's fine. Like if I didn't uh, stake this at all, it would still be okay. And worst case scenario, I'll just, I'll probably just tie this to a stake to straighten it for one year. It's just not a big deal. So they're going to tell you that you know you have to head that back, and then when these grow, you have to head them back for the same reason to stimulate side growth and to keep these from getting too long and wispy but that's not what I want. I want to get this tree form quickly. I don't wanna wait for years. And I, I use this method for years. When I first, most of my trees here were trained that way. And I was just like, this is lame. How, how can I do this better? I wanna get there quickly. And I want, you know, specific branches and I want them in specific directions. Like these three, I want pointing in three divided directions, or in this case, you know, north, south, east, and west or whatever. Now, another thing about this method is that this right here, is important that these go out quite a ways and kind of uh, up a little bit. And that's because we're achieving this co-dominance effect, right? 
So normally if we just let this grow and it grows straight up like a big pyramid like this, what happens is this top right here is dominant. It sends messages down here and it, it tells these guys to just grow out like this and not grow up. Think of a Christmas tree. The tip is dominant. You know, we're here we've achieved co-dominance. So because these come out and up, because they're pretty big, they compete with the top. And it, as again, think of this as trunks. So it's almost like the tree has four different trunks. So in order to establish co-dominance, I want shoots that look like this the first year. And I don't want to cut them. The next year I want them to go another, you know, 18 to 20 inches or so. And that's going to establish co-dominance early. So a lot of my inspiration came from a study done in the 1920s and they tested this and they said, oh, okay, well, everyone's telling us that we, we have to head back because the tree's gonna be too weak, that we have to head the limbs back because they're gonna be too weak. They just said, okay, we're gonna test that. They tested it and they found that it wasn't true. And in order to get a form like this, they found that you really wanna just let these grow and let them go kind of up just like this. This is perfect right here. So now we have to ask, well, if we're not heading back, how do we decide where the branches are? Let's say if I wanted a branch here, I would head back. Three or four of these buds right down here would grow out, and then I would choose one of those. I don't want to head it back, and also that doesn't tell me where the branches are going to grow, you know, like which direction, and I want, you know, specific directions. So what we're going to do is a combination of disbudding and notching the buds to force them to grow out. Now, first off, I'm going to take off these branches, but I want to tell you what I did here. This is actually a piece of rootstock that I'm going to graft new varieties onto. And last year I came in here, I cleaned this up, I cut off all the extra growth that was up and down here. And this had grown out about to here, so two inches long, and it had already stopped in very early summer. I think it was early June. I notched this. So I cut a notch here, and then I fertilized, mulched, and fed and watered the tree. That stimulated the thing to grow like crazy. Like for instance, from here to the ground is about the same distance as from here to the tip. And this is only one year growth because I, you know, lavished attention on this thing. And notching that right above here through the bark, which I'm gonna explain in a second, forced this to grow out. Um, but it's not as big as I want it. And it's also not as tall as I want it. I actually want these branches to be taller, I think. Let me question that for just a second. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this off because it's really nice. This is exactly what I want. But what I also want is I want these all to grow at about the same rate and achieve this like uh, co-dominance effect. So I could definitely take that and cut it back to like, you know, three to six inches and then make it have to grow itself over again. But sometimes if there's a really strong piece of growth like that, it will pull away enough resources to kind of stunt these anyway. So we're gonna start over. And also this makes a better demo because it's like I'm starting with a whip. Now it's best to do this in the first year's growth. So this is not a one year old tree. This tree has been here for 10 years. It was not cared for. The top that was grafted eventually died and then a sucker grew from the root and the sucker was growing way better. It was growing like, you know, 12 to 14 inches a year, I said, okay, well, let's just go with, with the sucker and we'll take care of it. And then I'm gonna graft new varieties onto this later. But from here up where we're training is one year's growth. So we have all these nice fresh buds. They haven't decided what they're gonna do yet. And we're gonna tell them what we want them to do. Okay, so the first thing I did is I picked the buds that I want. In this case, there's a road bed between me and you here. And I wanna be able to drive under that. So I want the highest limbs up here to be the ones that go over the road. And I want these here going back off the hill that are lower. I wanna train this tree pretty high because if it's ever out in the open and like deer can get to it or something, I don't want them to be able to trash the tree really easy. So this is gonna grow out and, and down a hill, like this goes downhill. So it'll kind of grow out over that, that slope and be too tall for the deer to reach for the most part. I have one going this way, one going that way, one going that way, and one coming this way. We'll do this bud right here, which grows um, that way. And then we'll do be close enough to that way. We can make that do what we want it to do. Then these two are, are okay the way they are. So in this case, I'm gonna leave three buds. Uh, the one that we're gonna use, one below it and one above it. In this case, I'm gonna take this bud off because I'm absolutely sure I don't want this lowest limb growing out into the road there but I'm gonna leave these other buds and the extra buds are insurance. And I'm gonna do that up and down here. So for instance, I'm gonna take off 
um, this bud, this bud, and this bud. So I have one back here, one here, and one here. The extra buds also feed the tree. So the tree needs to photosynthesize to make food, right? So it needs to be have leaves out get, gathering sunlight. And these extra buds will let them grow for one year so they can you know, provide that service as well. Now, any extra buds down here, I'm just picking these out with my, my thumbnail. Okay, and then we're gonna go up here and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take out a bunch of these buds. We can leave a few of these. Okay, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch these buds. And I'll notch these three and then we'll finish and then I'll get a close up for you. Notching consists of putting a notch through the bark and slightly into the wood or you can just scrape the wood right above the bud. Now when I say above, I mean directly above the growing point of the bud. So if the thing is this way, then you're still putting the notch right above the bud as if the, if the tree was growing upright. Now, people ask me questions about this all the time. It is not complicated. You know, cut an eighth inch wide notch through the bark, one third of the way around the, the little chute here. You scrape the wood a little bit so that um, it stops, you know, nutrients traveling up the tree. Make sure there's no bark left, not even the thin layer underneath the, uh, the main bark. Now, once in a while, you'll get a bud that either won't grow um, or it just will grow very weakly. And some other bud, for some reason, just wants to be dominant and take over. But remember, we saved uh, extra buds around the buds we want. So if something goes wrong, we do have like kind of a fail safe there. Well, about 18 to 20 inches up here, you want to cut it off. Yeah, it's about 18 inches long. So I'm actually just going to take off the very tip here just to stimulate it to branch up there for sure and make sure it branches, it probably will anyway. And that's it. So in the following years, the goal is gonna to be to fill all this in right here. So when a branch grows out like this, say this grows out, I'm gonna say, well, I want some scaffolds on this. Well, one option again is to cut it back, but we already just, you know, decided don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna pick buds. I'm gonna say, I want a branch growing off to the side this way. I don't want them on the top. I want them coming off the sides. I don't want them on the bottom. So I'm gonna say, I want a branch here and I'm gonna notch that bud. I'm not gonna do any probably much in the way of disc budding. If I did, I would actually take them, the, the buds immediately right around the bud I'm notching. And then I would go up a ways and pick another one going off this side, go up another like 12 to uh, 18 inches and pick another bud going off that way. And that's gonna give us these secondaries. And you can actually choose where you want those to grow. Uh, when these had grown for one year, I picked where I wanted side branches to grow off and I notched the buds. I picked out buds and I notched them and forced them to grow in certain places. All of those places where I notched a bud grew a bud just like I wanted. So I was able to steer it to get the uh, shoots where I wanted them. For instance, this is one of them here. This is one of them here. This is one of them here. Same thing on this branch. I notched this one. I notched that one. These are the only branches that grew out on this shoot. If I hadn't notched those, this would all be just these little studs right here, which are fruiting like fruiting spurs. Now, if this grows really well, in two years, these shoots will be pretty long. And in three, you know, three to four years, most of this is gonna be established. I mean, it's gonna grow out and get thicker and all that, and it'll require a little bit of attention. But you can get the main training done pretty fast if the tree's healthy and growing well. That's all I'm gonna say for today. I mean, there's definitely some follow-up we could talk about in terms of like the training and stuff like that. The one thing I will say is that you want to let these extra buds grow out because they're feeding the tree, like I said, and they offer you insurance, but let them grow for a year so they can gather food and feed the tree. Usually after the first year, I will cut all of those off flush to the trunk. And so all the energy is directed into these guys, which will then start you know, branching out and the tree should be able to feed itself fine. But if any of these grow really short, especially if they just grow like an inch or two and stop like a little stub, leave those on. Otherwise cut everything off and direct all the energy that's on the trunk 
into just these growing points. Okay, I have a little addendum here, just some stuff that I forgot or wanted to emphasize a little bit. You have your whip. This is a one year's growth. It's usually called a whip or a maiden. And it grew for one year, say from a graft. And it's just a tall thing with no branches. That's a whip or a maiden. And we want to grow this bud right here and this bud right here. So we notch above those and then we take off all the buds in between and we leave a couple more for good measure here. Now, if I really want this branch in a certain direction, I'm gonna take, like if there's a, a bud right here, but it grows exactly the opposite of where I want it, I might take that one out and leave, leave one up here that's maybe a little bit more in this direction. Now, notching can work really, really well. I mean, I've had just amazing luck with it, but every once in a while, for some reason, you get a bud that just really, really wants to grow and say, this, this is just gonna go hog wild, and then this bud, for some reason, doesn't wanna grow, even though it's notched just take this out. You know, if this is just being really, really aggressive, just take it all the way back real close to the trunk so you get any dormant buds off of there, and that will redirect energy in here. Like I said, you want to generally leave these shoots to grow out, these extra shoots. So, you know, this is going to typically grow big, and then these may or may not grow similar uh, often they'll just grow a lot smaller, but leave these so they feed the tree for the first year. But if you run into a problem where this is just super aggressive and it's competing with your uh, the scaffold branches you want, take it out. Now, if it's not that far off, you know, if it's not too far up or down and it's not too far off, say it's within 20 degrees of, of where you want the bud, you could also just leave it to grow. I mean, the goal is to fill in the space. All right, so we're gonna have like the center of the tree here and say we have three scaffold branches like this, right? And we want these to come out and fill the space. So let's say we have one that comes off like this because th something didn't work out. Like this, this branch accidentally broke, who knows what could happen. But we have something here that's say like about 20 degrees off of where we want it. If you can just bend this back over like that and make it grow into this space, Maybe take uh, the first secondary scaffold off here and grow that a little bit big to kind of come and fill this space in. That's totally fine. The goal is to fill the space. It doesn't really matter where these come off if you can get them to go where you want. The other thing you can do is say after it grows for a year, you can cut this off to a bud that's facing in this direction, like if you wanted it to grow out this way. So always be looking whenever you're pruning and training, look at your buds and where they are and where they're gonna grow and you can kind of guide the tree in that direction. But this could be bent with a wire. I've done weird things like I've had a branch coming out pretty much the same side, like say these two right here, and I wanted um, this branch to grow in that direction. And I've taken like a heavy wire and wrapped it around here and literally twisted this section of trunk like that in that direction. And after one year, that's gonna set and it's never gonna move again. Even if this stuff doesn't work, you have to realize that you're still better off than just hacking the tree off and hoping the things grow where you want them to grow, which usually doesn't work. And that's why you don't see these forms of trees that I recommend. You don't actually see them in real life or not very good examples because the methods that people are using are only suited to a open center tree. So the tree's gonna come up, you cut it off like this, and then a bunch of branches grow out like right here at the same spot and that ends up making an open center tree basically. Now I know a lot of people are gonna ask me about trees you get from the nurseries that are already two years old, or maybe you have a tree that you planted last year and it's already a year old or something like that. So often these will look something like this. For whatever reason, nurseries grow two-year trees. They're bigger, they're taller, they have more branches on them already, and people seem to prefer them. Uh, it's, the, it's the industry standard. I would like to see the industry standard be uh, whips because I think whips are easier to train, they're easier to transport, and I could I could make more arguments for for using whips as a commercial standard over two-year-old trees um, and I think I'm right but you know there may be good reasons to do, to use two-year-old trees but I've had pretty poor luck with them so often when you get them you'll have like branches that were broken in the nursery and you have to cut that off a lot of times the buds are broken and ripped like just like mangled because these are things that are harvested with machines, they're bundled into bundles, they're stored, they're moved, they're moved again, 
you know, they're at the nursery and people in a big thing of sawdust and people are digging around. So these things get broken off and stuff like that. Also, often you'll find a, a situation where, yeah, you might have three branches, but, you know, this one, these two are growing on the same side. You know, this one has a, an extremely steep angle, so that's no good right here. And you may or may not be able to use these. So there's different ways you can approach this. There's different things you can do. So you can cut these back like this to a, a downward facing bud usually, and then they'll grow back the second year while you get some of these others established. If you have good buds like here, say, or maybe this is a real weak branch or just a bud like a little branch, you can notch those and try to get them to grow out. But a pretty good way to do that is to say, you know, either if you have a couple of branches on the tree that you think are okay, cut those back to a downward facing bud, just pretty short, like three or four to five inches or six inches or something like that. And then go up here and find a healthy bud and just cut the thing off like that. And then the next year, this is going to grow up and then you can go back and treat, you know, this the same way I, I just described as a, as a whip. Um, or you could just start over. You could find, maybe you find a bud down here somewhere like this and just cut all this stuff off, grow a new top, and then go ahead and proceed if it's that, if it, as if that's a whip or a young tree like that. So sometimes the problem you'll have with this is that the, if these are really dominant and they're already pretty big, they'll tend to siphon off a lot of the resources of the tree before they can get up here and they'll sort of go, they'll become kind of dominant and start to suppress the growth up here. So occasionally that's a problem, and that could be an argument for just coming back, say, and just chopping this off and growing this new shoot and start, you know, taking all this stuff off and then just starting over. And really it's not going to set you back that much. All you're going to get is you're going to get one extra year of growth on these leaders um, that you wouldn't have had. And again, while that could get you fruit, just like maybe a little bit of fruit one year earlier, it also is going to disturb the potential to get all of these shoots to grow the same in the same year. So let's say we have, ignore all this, say we have a whip and we, we do our selection. So right in here, we're going to select three buds. Here, we're going to select three buds. Here, we're going to select three buds like that. Um, let's go for four. So up here, we'll select three buds. And then everything in between here, we're going to take all the buds off. And then we're going to pick those and we're going to notch them. We're going to say we want one this way, you know, one, one this way towards us, uh, one that way away from us, and one this way. Well, now we have the potential for all these to grow at a very even rate. So at the first end of the first year, it might look something, you know, like this, where these are about the same. And then this gets tall enough that we can top it off up here at 18 inches. So that's an argument for kind of just going back to the start with, with these two-year-old trees. I just don't like two-year-old trees. I've had poor luck with them. Nursery trees in general can be a problem. They're just treated so badly uh, before they get to you. Okay, one last thing. In the first year, when you have your branches coming off, like I said, you don't want this effect right here. You want 45 degrees or more. And that's going to make a nice, strong, wide crotch angle. This is going to grow outward, right? It's going to get big like this. And bark's going to get trapped right here. And that is never going to be strong. So everything from here up, as far as this keeps growing and growing together like this, as the tree gets bigger, this is all going to be weak. There's no strength to this at all. The bark isn't strong. It's like two pieces of bark and they're just smashed together. So if you have a branch like that that's kind of tending to come up, it's a, a young new shoot early in the season, uh, late spring to early summer. So you want to wait long enough that it's tough enough that you're not just going to snap it off. But you still want it to be rubbery and flexible enough to bend right here and really open, open it up right in here right away. So bend that down like this and then stick a clothespin on it. You clip the clothespin on here like this. The side of the clothespin pushes the chute down. It's just kind of holding it down. And within a month, you can just take it off and it'll be set that way. You know, if it's, if it's young, vigorous growth, it's gonna be all rubbery. And then, you know, within a month, it's gonna be woody again. And uh, you can just take the thing off and you'll have that reset. So definitely do that early in the season because some of these shoots are just gonna wanna do that. They're just gonna go straight up like this. And clearly there's a lot more to this. This is an art, not a science. Uh, there's just all kinds of decisions you have to make, but you know, you don't need to overthink it too much and you're going to 
encounter some bumps and glitches on the way, but you know, you, you'll find your way around it and you'll end up with a much, much better tree than most people because, uh, you know, you're at least going after something really specific. You now understand what you're going after. If you're going to use this uh, tree form that I talked about, you have some tools that are more like, much more likely to get you there. And any little things that go wrong, you can figure out a way to fix them generally.